Let's see. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. First and foremost, I wanted to thank you for attending. My name is Dr. Tracy Thomas. I am one of the group facilitators here at Circles. I'm a psychologist with approximately 20 years experience in the mental health field. I've worked with many individuals, couples, families, and children. For those who don't know, Circles is a leading platform for emotional support that ensures no one needs to overcome life's challenges alone. It is built on the core principle that in order to overcome life's challenges, you need to be heard and supported by people who actually understand what you're going through. Our platform matches people who are going through the same challenges in their lives, such as divorce and other in grief and others. Topics. Each circle is led by a mental health professional, professional such as ourselves, and together members support each other through their healing process. Before we officially get started, I just want to mention a few logistical things. This is a webinar, meaning there is one-way audio and video, so you can see and hear me, but I can't see or hear you. That being said, I do want to hear from you, and I will answer any comment, questions or comments you may have. If you have any questions for me, you can submit them through the box on your screen. I will be presenting on the imposter syndrome not feeling good enough. I hope that this webinar will be helpful in learning more about the thoughts that so often causes internal conflict. So let's get started. So today, know that you are good enough. Stop worrying if you are pretty enough, handsome enough, strong enough, rich enough, smart enough. You must know that you're enough. Don't let negative thoughts have power over you. Take a deep breath and know that you matter and are good enough. Many people will experience feeling like they're not good enough at least once in their lifetime. What most don't realize is that you are not alone and that there are ways to stop the cycle of not feeling good enough or feeling like an imposter. So today what you will learn, what is imposter syndrome, the characteristics of imposter syndrome, causes and risks for developing imposter syndrome and overcoming feeling not good enough. We can't hate ourselves into a version of ourselves we can love. Imposter syndrome is a pattern of negative thinking that can lead to self-doubt, negative self-talk, and missed opportunities. Imposter syndrome is the experience of feeling like a phony. You feel as though at any moment you're going to be found out as a fraud, like you don't belong, and you only got where you are by accident or luck. It is a belief that we are not as good as others around us. We assume that we do not know what others know, but the reality is that we know just as much. We also feel like he, that we are not competent as others think and worry that others will find out. Please remember that although we think and say that we feel that I am not good enough, it is a thought, not a feeling. Pluralistic ignorance is associated with imposter syndrome and not feel, feeling good enough. So what that means is we doubt ourselves privately, but believe we are alone in feeling this way because no one says that they feel this way. Many are afraid of confronting the feelings because they do not want, to, want the feelings to be confirmed, so they avoid it. On the other hand, others praising them does not make a difference because you don't believe it. So there are names that imposter syndrome is known as. So it's known as imposterism, imposter phenomenon, and an imposter experience. Unlike what is thought of when you hear of a syndrome, imposter syndrome is not a medical problem. It's not a disease or an abnormality. It's not all, it is not always associated with depression anxiety, or self-esteem, 
although intense feelings of imposterism can be debilitating and keep us from excelling. The feeling of not being good enough can have a profound impact on how we think, feel, and behave. Not feeling good enough can be associated with feeling like being an imposter where you question everything you do and are so afraid of being found out. So imposter syndrome can occur in various settings. At work, it can keep you from asking for a raise or applying for a promotion, and it can, and it can increase burnout. It happens at home where you struggle with making decisions for your child due to fear of messing your, up your child. It happens at school where you're afraid of asking questions. It happens in relationships where you self-sabotage your relationship, pushing your partner away because you just don't feel good enough for them. Shame. Feelings of not being good enough are fueled by shame. Shame is awkward and uncomfortable. Shame is a self-conscious emotion that comes from looking at yourself poorly. The root of shame is not feeling good enough in feelings of inadequacy. Shame robs you of your power. People pleasing results from feelings of not good enough. We lose ourselves in other viewpoints of ourselves, hiding behind others' opinions of ourselves, which we then develop a misconception that everyone is better than ourselves, than us. So basically, you hold everybody else's feelings of thoughts of you in a higher regard than you feel about yourself. So negative, negativity bias makes negative experiences more prominent than the positive. We are hardwired this way to protect you from getting hurt, although in this situation, it can hurt you. So in, negative, in negativity bias, our minds are always thinking of the negative. It's very hard to focus on the positives. So in this example, you can actually feel very having a great, wonderful day, everything's going really great for you. And then one thing happens and your day is completely ruined. And all you can focus on is that one negative thing. But remember, it's, nat it's natural. So our inner critic, which is gonna be some of those negative thinking that you have in your negative thinking cycles can be paralyzing. It leads to believing that our thoughts are a true representation of reality. Recognizing the cycle of negative thinking can help you develop the tools to get past it. The cycle of worry consists of you're not good enough, followed by self-imposed pressure to be successful, and then you worry, are you good enough again? If something does not go well, the thought of failure brings about all the other times in your life that you made a mistake. Since we are constantly seeking approval based on our own standards that we identify, we spend our entire lives trying to please these standards, but we'll never reach those goals. Because we always, every time you get close to it, we actually increase those standards by higher and higher. So it's just one very vicious cycle. So we have some false beliefs. Some of those false beliefs is that we we believe that you're we're not in charge of our life. As everything we think we have to do and who we are are externally defined by society. It's defined by culture, it's defined by our family, by our peer group. But remember, all of those are constantly changing. They are never the same. The belief that we aren't good enough ends up driving our life choices. We are constantly trying to prove our worth and it becomes the motive behind everything we do. It can drive our whole life if we let it. So there's some questions to think about. 
As you think of the following questions, we will explore how each of them, we explore all of them and how to reshape them. So what does good enough truly mean? Who sets the standards? How do you know when you are good enough? What do you have to do to be good enough? So what do we really want? We all deeply want to feel love and be lovable through being good. That's what this is really about. Love, loving yourself, feeling loved by others. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Now that we've discussed what imposter syndrome and not feeling good enough is, we will identify the characteristics of imposter syndrome. What we tell ourselves. We tell ourselves my friends are only still here because they pity me. I didn't deserve any of the things I worked for because I didn't work hard enough. He only loves me because he hasn't realized I'm bad. I shouldn't even celebrate this success because it was just some random luck. What if I'm just faking being a good person and everyone is falling for it? I'm not as good as people tell me I am. They're just being polite to me. This good thing is just a fluke. If you all really knew me, I don't think you'd like me very much. Everyone is going to realize that I'm just a fraud. Any praise I get feels undeserved. So what we tell ourselves stems from feelings of insecurity, unfounded fears, and those pervasive feelings of fraudulence. Not feeling good enough is one of the most common thoughts that people experience. About 70 to 80% of adults have had feelings of not being good enough at least one time in their lives. It affects all ages, all genders, all races, and all social classes. But there are some differences among gender and races and ethnicity. Men, imposter phenomenon or imposter syndrome affects men differently. Men have more anxiety when they receive negative feedback. Men sometimes do not recognize the feelings and they internalize the feelings as if something is wrong with them. In race and ethnicity, it's more prevalent in minorities and disadvantaged populations. In acknowledging how racism and oppression exasperates these feelings, minorities and disadvantaged populations sometimes feel like they do not belong within their own group or among other groups. This all stems from many uh, feeling uh, stereotypes or experience discrimination. So some traits that many people have experienced feelings of not good enough or imposter syndrome are not feeling good enough is a judgment. We judge ourselves the most critical, causing ourselves pain. We compare ourselves to others that can actually spiral into feeling not good enough. We attribute our success to external factors. So when used as a motivation, it creates constant anxiety. It starts another cycle by justifying your actions for why you were sick were successful, then you repeat unhealthy behaviors, which perpet perpetuates anxiety. So we also berate our performance and inability to realistically assess our competence and skills. So everything we think, it's just not good enough. We fear that we won't live up to expectations. So we are constantly doubting ourselves and our abilities. It also can come from overachieving. So setting very, very challenging goals, and then when you don't reach it, you feel disappointed. We also sabotage our own success. We have irrational beliefs about ourselves. We can't internalize that someone can love you for you, 
not what you think they should love. So you have to develop a personality to actually conform to another person and you've changed who you are because you want them to love that person that you think they should love and you don't give them a chance to love who you are. And then there's no threshold of accomplishment that you can make you feel like you're good enough. So as much as you strive to make yourself feel like I'm going to get here and this is how I'm going to be or this is where I'm going to try to get to, you'll never reach it. So your belief about yourself is so strong that it doesn't change no matter the situation. The thought, am I good enough, can keep you in, un in unsatisfying relationships. Even before that, you, can, you will settle for someone who you normally would not date because they showed an interest in you. So we are also going to now talk about some personality traits that have a greater risk of developing imposter syndrome. So some self-efficacy, perfectionism, and eroticism. So self-efficacy is a person's belief in their ability to succeed in a particular situation. Our belief in our own ability to succeed plays a role in how we think, how we act, and how we feel about our place in this world. People with a weak self sense of self-efficacy, they avoid challenging tasks, believe that difficult tasks and situations are beyond our capabilities, focus on personal failings and negative outcomes, and quickly lose confidence in the personal abilities. Perfectionism. So Brene Brown states, perfectionism is not the same thing as striving to your best, to be your best. Perfectionism is, a, is not about healthy achievement and growth. She explains that perfectionism is used by many people as a shield to protect against the pain of blame, the pain of judgment, and the pain of shame. Perfectionism is closely related to not feeling good enough. When you don't perform perfectly in every aspect of your life, it causes feelings of incompetence and anxiety. Mario Farlio said, perfectionism at its core isn't about high standards. It's about fear, fear of failure, Fear of looking stupid, fear of making a mistake, fear of being judged, criticized, and ridiculed. It's the fear that one simple fact might be true. You're just not good enough. Neuroticism. It typically is defined as a general tendency toward anxiety, depression, self-doubt, and other negative feelings. So you're just going to experience them more. Then you have some mental health disorders. So not feeling good enough may result from a self-defeating personality disorder. People with this type of disorder have a pattern of behaving like a victim and often do not allow themselves to view the positives, even in activities they enjoy. They may appear to be self-sabotaging every aspect of their lives. So we also have some types of imposter syndrome. There's five of them. So the perfectionists, they fixate some mistakes. The superhero, they work as hard as possible. The expert, they underrate their own expertise. The natural genius, they set unrealistic goals and are devastated when they can't accomplish it. The soloist, their individualistic and self-worth comes from working alone, so asking for help is a sign of weakness. So how does it happen? Why doesn't everyone experience not feeling good enough? There are some common causes and risks for developing imposter syndrome, which we will now explore. Ultimately, the inner critic is trying to look out for us and is afraid about our survival. So when it is telling us we are not good enough, it is often trying to motivate us so that we survive by Allie Miller. There are some risks that, we, that happens in our lives that actually will 
increase our chances of feeling this way. And these are about nine of them. Personality traits, family upbringing, childhood trauma, lifelong feelings, social context, social media, self-talk, transitions, and expectations. Personality traits were previously discussed, so we're not going to go too much into that. So some base their self-esteem on external sources and not internally. So in your family upbringing, some children are raised with controlling or overprotective parents. As a child, you are not allowed to become independent or your choices were restricted. Then we have childhood trauma. In childhood trauma, where you've got limiting of beliefs. Limiting of beliefs is internalized beliefs about who we are and what we are good at. So those are actually formed in your childhood. In this case, if we act a certain way, we will be loved. If we let these beliefs affect our entire lives, you are treated as worthless or subhuman. When it's abuse, you grow up with a skewed sense of self and a low, very low self-esteem. You are held and at unrealistic standards and falsely blame. You're expected to be perfect. You, you experience labels such as, oh, you're so bad, or you're such a problem. So you're think, you grow up thinking you're problematic. You also sometimes grow up thinking, receiving contradictory messages. Do as I say and not as I do. Sometimes you're given the responsibility of something that you're not responsible for, such as raising your siblings. And if you don't do a good enough job raising them, they lead, those feelings can lead to shame or, and guilt. You're, you are grown up being compared to your siblings or family members or other children. So that this case, you're, the child feels insecure, cautious, flawed, distrustful, and just not good enough. So that leads to the compulsive, compulsive thoughts of, I'm not good enough. So you're feeling inferior or superior to others. You're also taught to feel helpless. So you're just taught to be dependent on others. You're not allowed to make decisions, not allowed to explore make or, or make mistakes. You're feeling like you don't have control over your lives, which is also called learned helplessness. And you stay very close to your parents. Which cause which and that is caused from your parents' own feelings of abandonment or fear of, of or fear of abandonment. Any one of these traits can actually cause you to have some child will cause you to develop those thoughts of not feeling good enough. They are not you don't have to experience all of them to feel that way. It's just and one or the other or all of them. So in this one, what happens in childhood doesn't always stay in childhood. It can actually go on through your life. Lifelong feelings. Your feelings were undermined and you learned to question your feelings and thoughts, which impacts every aspect of your life. You struggle to relieve the feelings that we are less capable or deserving. The feeling of not being good enough comes from self-criticism, self judgment and self-rejection. The solution then is self-love and self-compassion. The constant negative self-imposed judgment leaves us feeling exhausted instead of motivated. It can lead to, so, to low self-esteem, shame, isolation, depression, anxiety, addiction, insomnia, eating disorders, and relationship issues. Remember, your past is, is a part of who you are, but it does not define you. So social anxiety it is marked by extreme fear in social settings and fear of being judged and scrutinized. Not everyone who has social anxiety has imposter syndrome or vice versa. There's just a higher risk of it.
So social context, how you are treated by others can also be a cause, to, cause of imposter thoughts. These internalized negative perceptions of the self are born out of environments and social interactions that lead people to question their abilities and worth. So you learn to feel inadequate, which is a lie that starts from societal, societal pressures. At the societal level, the group that someone belongs to and the betrayal of those groups in societies play an important role in triggering ind individuals' imposter feelings. Women and the disadvantaged population tend to be the subject of stereotypes or negative feedback, which again, triggers some of those feelings of not being good enough. Underlying or blatant criticism can cause your, this person to question their ability. Negative portrayals of ethnicities can also cause doubts on whether one deserves anything positive. Social media. So you compare yourself to people in society. So you have these false views that everyone's life is better than yours. The messages received from social media perpetuates the feelings of not good enough. What you see in social media, the drive to be the best you can be, some of those inner traumas and internalized beliefs contribute to feelings of not being good enough. So you're constantly comparing yourself, whether it be people that you know or celebrities, and you always find yourself to be wanting. Self-talk. Self-talk is those internal vocalizations. So when, in, so some of those things you have to say, ask yourself is when and why did I start asking myself, why am I not good enough? So in this case, you've got to do the internal work to answer this question. It's going to be difficult, but it's the only way to uncover the past and heal. You have to explore whether you're holding on to guilt. Like, have you been rejected, betrayed, traumatized, judged, or shamed? Holding on to the thoughts and holding on to those words that you say to yourself will also trigger those feelings. It keeps you from future pain from others, but the internal pain caused by yourself could be worse. Transitions also could be a cause. When you're transitioning from one role to another or having major changes in your life, you always, well, not always, most people will actually question whether they are good enough for these roles or any new changes. Expectations are the source of the biggest disappointments. So you have to let go of expectations. Stop turning to others for your personal fulfillment. At times, we subconsciously look for ways to support our thoughts of not measuring up. So shifting these patterns is essential in changing the self-defeating cycle. Other causes. You dream big and other people say your dreams are unrealistic. You're afraid to leave your comfort zone. And not being good enough is a cunning excuse to avoid taking action. And that you're also assuming others are judging you. The greatest dreams are always unrealistic. The worst lies we tell ourselves are the lies no, sorry. The worst lies are the lies we tell ourselves by Richard Bach. So here are some lies that we tell ourselves. I don't have enough experience. I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm too skinny. I'm too fat. My idea has already been done before. I'm fooling everyone. I'm just winging it. I'll never get it perfect. So I shouldn't do it at all. I'm a fraud and everyone will figure it out. I'm going to fail. I've got too much to lose, or I've got nothing to lose. Feeling not good enough 
leads to thoughts of feeling like nothing you do is enough. You are constantly beating yourself for past mistakes. You feel feel like you're not as good as other people. You desire to play down your strengths. You feel like you don't deserve good things. You have anxiety about what you do wrong. And you believe your thoughts are one way and with reality is something totally different. In romantic relationships, feeling not good enough stems from fear of being, fear of being rejected, alone, or infidelity within the relationship. So how to counter those not feeling good enough? Be open and honest with your partner about how you feel, especially the moment you start feeling insecure. You have been criticizing, criticizing yourself for years and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens. Louise L. Hayes. So as we spent some time talking about what imposter syndrome is to the cause of it, we're gonna focus the rest of our time together on how to overcome the feelings of not good enough. Since there's not one step that fits all, these are suggestions that you can try. Keep in mind that the thought of not feeling good enough is a signal of unmet needs. Counter the thoughts. Being aware of these feelings can help you start to reframe your thoughts by collecting and remembering positive feedback. Repeating to yourself, I am confident. I am capable. You can learn to tolerate discomfort and accept imperfections. Changing your mindset. Share your feelings with others. Understand that mistakes are part of growth. You are not your mind. You're not the thoughts you think. You are enough. Talk about it. Counter it through talking about it. Share your feelings. If it's an open conversation about you're not feeling good enough and you learn that others you know feel this way, it helps normalize the feelings. Reaching out to someone who is objective to all, can also help counter your feelings. They help to put your thoughts into perspective, provide their views on the context while offering you support. Ask yourself, who do you spend time with? You can control how you feel about yourself, although people around you influence your views. We want people in our lives that are positive, not negative. Learning to love and accept you will show others how to value you and you teach them how to treat you. More often than not, people are not judging you. As you think and wonder if they are, you are causing more anxiety and inner turmoil within you. So just learning to talk with your family, with your friends, and express that you don't feel this way would can sometimes help to actually move you past this. Choose yourself. Have grace, empathy, and self-compassion for yourself. Distinguish between who you are and what you do. Recognize the facts that shame causes you to not feel lovable. Recognize negative stereotypes. Recognize what internalizations you are taking from the outside world. What is somebody else doing? What is somebody else saying? And you are thinking it's about you when it really is not. Recognizing how your body, your body stores negative emotions. Where in your body do you feel it? Self-validation. Remember that you are seen and accepted by someone who you love. Being able to tell yourself that you love yourself. 
Your journey is yours. No one has your identical experience. You are unique. Never give up, especially on yourself. Keep trying. If you had stopped trying, you wouldn't be here now. The only approval you need is your own. The power of positive self-talk. It builds self-confidence. It improves your attitude. It allows for taking some risk. It promotes self-love, encourages motivation, helps you cope with stress, and helps work through some challenges. Choosing yourself by positive self-talk and valuing that you have an opinion. Retrain that inner critic, that one that's telling you that you're not good enough. Retrain it to to say that you are or to coach you instead of criticize you. Changing that negative voice to positive and supportive voice. Like you try, you're trying your best. It is good enough. Reminding yourself you have a choice. So replacing those self-defeating thoughts like, why didn't I do that good enough? Or why didn't I do that right? With the truth is you are still learning. You are good enough and and nothing can change that. It is the thoughts that you feel and not reality. You have a right to your own perspective and, and opinion. Do not sacrifice your beliefs to conform to society. Strive to live your best life. Question yourself. You have to ask yourself some difficult questions, such as, what do I believe about myself? Do I believe I am worthy of love? Unconditional love. And love just as you are, who you are. Do you have to be perfect to be approved? What would you say to a friend or a child or anyone if you heard the words you are saying to yourself? Would you agree with them? Or would you tell them the opposite? Would you treat someone else the way you treat yourself? Do what you believe make sense? What do you like about yourself? What do you love unconditionally? What is your number one accomplishment in life? What do you enjoy doing when no one is watching? If there was no such thing as fear and failure, what would your life look like? Make your accomplishments concrete, such as, I got this job, I completed this assignment, I'm in this wonderful relationship, or I'm not in that. I'm alone and I feel good about it. I have overcome. Write down your accomplishments. Write down what you are good at. Reward yourself for taking action. Don't try to reward yourself for what you did well. It's about the process. Focus in the moment. You are only in control of the moment you are in now, not in the past and not in the future. The past is gone and the future is not here yet. Find those exceptions in your mind. When did you feel good enough? When were you proud of yourself? Again, focus on the process rather than the results. Getting to your goal is more fun than reaching it. Most of the time when we reach our our goal, it's anticlimactic. It's like, oh, we did it. Let's do something else. Remember when you're learning something healthy and new, it is challenging And each time you meet those steps or each time you accomplish that goal, it feels good. When you finally reach the end, 
it feels good for it feels good for a moment, and then you start again. Focus on others without comparing. Remember that what someone says or thinks about you may have nothing to do with you. Some pe- sometimes people take out their own feelings and thoughts on you. So they may be having a bad day. They may be feeling some kind of way and they take it out on you. Although the words hurt, put the words and thoughts where they belong, which is not on you. It is their baggage, not yours. People having a bad day tend to take out their bad day on those around them. So it's going to be also important to stop comparing. Stop comparing yourself to anyone. Everyone has their own journey and no one is perfect. On social media, people tend to highlight the good while hiding the bad. The people you are comparing yourself is comparing themselves to other people too. Look at others through the lens of compassion and understanding to help you to remember that they are humans. Respond with love and acceptance to others' failures and successes. As we tend to respond how others respond to you, respond in a way that you would want to hear. So as you are accepting others, you'll find that they are accepting you and they are also going to be your cheerleader and they're going to encourage you when you are starting to feel bad. Sometimes also complete an act of kindness. So helping others can also help to improve your own self feelings of self-worth. Make a who I am vision board. On these on this vision board, you identify your strengths those kind words, those positive affirmations, those celebrations of you, those celebrations of your accomplishments, those things that you have to be proud of. Once you create this vision board, then hang it up to somewhere, someplace that you can see and that you can view and you can see on a daily basis. You can also, uh, along with that, you can also create a vision or words, uh, positive affirmations that you can put on your phone on your as a screensaver on your home screen that every time you look at your phone or on sticky notes around your house, that every time you look at these things, you can say, you can remind yourself that you are worthy. You are good enough. And it, and it says, and try not to say you are, make it personal. I am, I am good enough. I am worthy. I am great. Anything that you want to say. But sometimes you have to fake it till you make it, fake it till you you don't may not believe it right away. But as you continue to do this, you will actually feel that you will actually start believing it. But that goes into participating in self-affirmations. And some of those self-affirmations are, I am enough. I believe in me. I am worthy of love. I am on my side. I take care of myself. My heart knows. So you're going to write a different one, different affirmation on a daily basis. Repeat that forces you to repeat the ones that you wrote the day before and to recognize that there is something positive about you every day. Write yourself some encouraging notes. Write down your positive traits your strengths, your abilities, your accomplishments. Remember the question, am I good enough? This question does not define you. Don't believe everything you think. Your thoughts are just thoughts. Your thoughts do not have to become your actions and definitely not who you are. Remember, your thoughts can be truly exhausting and we wanna change those. So some other ones, journaling. When you're journaling, maybe you get one journal, maybe you get two. Sometimes you want to journal some your true negative thoughts in there. That's completely going to be separate to your positive affirmations ones. You want to write down your feelings. You want to focus on what you have to be grateful for so you can get a gratefulness journal. You want to replace your negative thoughts 
and feelings with positive ones. So you may have a journal with all your negative thoughts and then you have one with all your positive ones. In most, situ most negative situations, there is always a positive somewhere, somewhere in it. It's just a matter of finding it. You want to add inspirational quotes sometimes. You want to be present in the here and now. You want to use meditation. So thinking you are not good enough is not good enough. You want to focus on those thoughts that are good enough. Try not to focus on the thoughts, acknowledge it, and let it go. Some may be thinking, yeah, but. The but is negating the previous sentence and countering the progress that you are making. Change does not happen instantaneous. It takes one step at a time to experience the emotions that are associated with your thoughts. Be patient with yourself and, pro and the process. In the grounding technique, it's just remembering that you are here and now. So in this one, you can you know, five, four, three, two, one. List five things you can see, four things you can feel, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. And as you're slowly counting down, you're taking slow belly breaths between them. And that will actually make force you to get in the here and now and not to be stressed and worried about something else. So learning to love yourself, again, stop comparing yourself to others. Don't worry about others' opinions. You can't make everyone happy. And it, truly, it's a waste of time. It is okay to make mistakes. Everyone fails. Change the thoughts about failure. Change it to something like failure is the next step to success and an opportunity to learn and, glow, and grow. You are closer to achieving your goals. Focus on your previous successes. Remember, failures are necessary. Your value lies within. Let go of toxic people. It can be painful, but it's the way for you to protect yourself. Process those fears. Trust yourself to make good decisions. You know what is in your heart. Listen to your instincts. Enjoy every moment you can because all we have is now. Put yourself first. You can't take care of anyone else unless you are healthy. Feel your emotions. Your emotions can help you learn more about who you are. Your emotions are valid. Remember not to dwell because emotions can be irrational as well. Do what makes you happy. This sometimes requires you to learn who you are or relearn who you are. Explore your own desires and dreams. Focus on things that make you feel good. Value yourself. Celebrate yourself. Learn to be your own cheerleader. Accept yourself. When you accept yourself, you are free from the burden of needing others to accept you. Don't allow anyone or anything to control, limit, repress, or discourage you from being your true self by Steve Marabelli. You are always good enough. Change those self-fulfilling prophecy from not good enough to you are always good enough. The more you value yourself, the more power you are, you have. Practice thinking it until it becomes who you are and you will believe it. You're only you. You are the only you there ever has been or ever will be. You are wonderfully and uniquely you. Stay humble. Recognizing you are not perfect is okay. It keeps you motivated to continue to grow and work hard. Don't let your thoughts become debilitating and keep you from success. There's so many more that I can talk about here, but due to time, we will briefly address taking care of yourself in a relationship and helping children to break the cycle. In a relationship, take care of yourself in it. Be careful not to test the relationship as this is a way to self-sabotage. Surround yourself with others that make you happy. 
It is okay to have healthy friendships and acquaintances outside of your current relationship. Helping children, praise the effort, not the outcome. Constant criticism or overly praise, you need to find a balance. Realistically understand their strength and their weaknesses. If you're still struggling, seek out help. Seek out professional help. Join a support group. Since belonging is one of the underlying causes of not feeling good enough, belonging is a goal to strive for, which could be found in support groups. They can also help normalize some of your feelings of not being good enough. Until you stop breathing, there's more right with you than wrong. In our natural state, we are glorious beings. In the world of illusion, we are lost and imprisoned slaves. Our jailer is a three-headed monster. One head our past, one our insecurity, and one our popular culture. You've come so far, and no matter how low moments, how many low moments you have, they do, do not, they do not define who you are. That's by Morgan Harper Nichols. My final thoughts. Everyone is good enough. You have worked so hard. You have given so much. You have made it through countless moments of not feeling good enough. And if there are days when you still feel discouraged, joining a support group can help alleviate these feelings. And any questions? Let me see. Okay. So I see one. Um, why don't some of the coping skills work? Well, some of the coping skills don't work because when people tend to try to use coping skills, you're in crisis and it just won't work. Coping skills need to be practiced on a daily basis because at that time you're, you're retraining your body and mind to know what to do when you are in crisis. Okay, and is there any more questions? Ah, yes, a support group. Um, remembering just having others support you can help counter your own thoughts and connecting others can also help you feel not so alone. Okay. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. I want to take a moment to thank you for attending this webinar with an open mind and heart. I know thoughts of not feeling good enough is painful. Just being here shows how much you're wanting to understand. I hope you're all, I hope you are all leaving today feeling better having taken the first step of your healing journey. Now that you've taken that first step, an amazing second step would be to join circles if you haven't already. You'll have a group of people who know not only know exactly what you're going through, but are going to support you, support you every step of the way. With that being said, there is a special offer for our new people, and I will actually put it. Here we go. Using code new 2022, you will get your first month at Circles for free. You'll receive an email shortly with all the details and how to join. And starting now, you no longer have to learn how not to be good enough by yourself. Thank you again for joining and have a great rest of your night.